I came across this site the other day and I actually really like several of the things they've done in here. In fact, I'm going to show you one of these things today, but I have a second video planned for another feature on this website. But where we're starting today is with these blog cards. You can see they're pretty simple here, and while I don't love the round image, the hover effect on these is actually pretty cool. You see when we hover over these, they have different color backgrounds that kind of swipe in from the right hand side. It's a nice subtle effect that adds a pop of color to the page, and it's something that we can achieve pretty easily inside the Generate Blocks editor. We're going to be able to do this by using pseudo elements. Now I know I've done several videos on pseudo elements in the past, and I'll make sure to link to all those down in the video description below but it's something that I see a lot of people struggling with or not knowing exactly how to put them to use. They're one of my favorite tools inside of CSS, so I thought I'd show you how to set up this effect using pseudo elements in today's video. If that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and let's get started. All right, here inside the Generate Blocks editor, all I've done so far is just added a section with a wrapper inside of it just to get us started. We're gonna go ahead and use posts, kind of like they did on the example site. So I'm gonna start by adding a query block to the page and we'll just start out blank. Here inside that query block, we can see we have our looper and loop item. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a three column grid. And we'll go in here and add just a bit of column gap and row gap in between each one of these cards. Now we need to go ahead and bring in some of the dynamic data. So we'll go in here to the image. I'm gonna go over to the settings, into the dynamic tags, and we're gonna choose the featured image. Now here, just to make sure that they are all the same height, you can see I have some posts kind of duplicated in here. I'm just gonna go in here to the sizing. We'll make sure the width is set to 100%, and I'm gonna set the aspect ratio to 16 over nine. This will just make sure if we ever add more blog posts to the site with an image of a different aspect ratio, all of these on the page will look the same. Now underneath that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a headline block. We'll leave this as an H2. We'll go into our dynamic tags and we'll bring in the post title. Now underneath that, I'm just gonna add a date. So for that, we can use the text block again into the dynamic tags, and we'll change this to post date. I'm not gonna try to match their design exactly. What I'm really worried about is creating that background effect on hover. So now we got the general idea of what we're gonna need for these cards, and we can get in and start actually styling things. Now, the first thing we're gonna need is some padding around the card because we're not gonna want that color to start right at this edge. So let's go ahead and go into our card here, and I'm just gonna give this a class of blog hyphen card and we'll hit create. We'll start with a blank style and we'll go into our spacing. I'm gonna link all these together and do maybe 32 pixels of padding around it. Now we can't really see it here without the color background, but if I go ahead and select this loop item, you can see we now have that padding inside the card. The other thing we're gonna need here is some border radius. It's pretty big in the example. I'll start with maybe something like 16 pixels just to get us started and we can always adjust that later. Now we're gonna use a pseudo element to create that background color. And I wanna make sure that it respects this border radius. So an easy way to do that is just go in here into the position and we're gonna change the overflow on both the X and Y axis to clip. And that will just make sure that the pseudo element that we use gets clipped off by the same border radius. So speaking of our pseudo element, we need to set that up next. So I'm gonna go in here to our manage selector screen. I'm gonna click on the new button and here I'm gonna go ahead and select the before pseudo element and hit create. Now with this pseudo element, we need to make sure we add something in the content field here. Since we're not actually adding content to the pseudo element, we can just put two quote marks here, which will just give us blank content. We'll go back up to our sizing controls. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 100% width and 100% height, just so we can make sure that we're actually getting something on the screen here. We'll go down into our backgrounds and we'll change this background to blue. Maybe I'll just lighten that up a bit. Like I said, I'm not trying to recreate this exact website, just give us the same effect here. So something like this nice blue will work. Now we still don't see the pseudo element on the page. So I need to go in here to our position. I'm gonna change that to absolute and I'll go ahead and set the top, right and bottom coordinates all to zero. I just wanna make sure that it starts over here on the right hand side. So I'm not gonna mess with this left. Now you can see it is respecting our border radius here, which is great, but we don't want this to start out at a hundred percent width. We also have the problem of it being in front of our image, so we're gonna to have to mess with the Z index as well. Let's go ahead and take care of that Z index issue first while we can still see that color. I'll go ahead and grab this image. 
we'll go into position and we'll set this Z index to two just to make sure it stays on top of our cards. In fact, just to be safe here, I'll go ahead and set that Z index for all the elements inside of our cards. There's some more elegant ways we could do this without having to do them all individually, but there's only three elements here, so I think that's easy enough. All right, so let's go back in here. We'll make sure we select our blog card. We'll go into our manage selectors and back to our before selector where we were before. And I'm gonna change this width to 0%. This way it's 0% wide, it's zero pixels wide, and we don't see it on the background right now. Now they did have a nice fade in effect, so we wanna set that on our before pseudo element. So I'm gonna scroll down here into our effects and we're gonna go in here and create a transition. I'll do this at maybe 0.35 seconds and we'll change the timing function to ease in out. Now still, we don't see any of these effects here because we're gonna have to set up these hover states. I'll go ahead and go back into my main class here. We'll go into our manage selectors and we're gonna need to create a new class. What we wanna do is select our before element only when this card is being hovered. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and type in an ampersand or you can always toggle this compound selector. That's all that compound selector does is add the ampersand here. We're gonna type in colon is and open our parentheses, type in colon hover, comma, colon focus and close our parentheses. Now we have that hover and focus taken care of. Now we just need to do our before element. So I'll do two colons and then write the word before. We can go ahead and hit create and now we just wanna change that width to 100%. Because when we hover over this card, we want the width of that background to go from 0% all the way to 100%. And if I set this up correctly, we should see this happen right now. I'll go ahead and hover over that card and you can see it's doing exactly what we wanted on this. So let's go ahead and save these changes and take a look at it on the front end. Now it's important to test this on the front end and not just the back end. We can see we definitely have a mistake here. When I hover over this card, you can see our background's taking up this entire section. And that's because of a little trick inside the editor where it actually sets the parent to a relative position in the editor, but not on the front end. And this just has to do with where they position some of the UI elements to add new blocks to your page. But we definitely need to constrain that absolutely positioned pseudo element to the card itself. So let's hop back in the editor and make sure we set the card's position to relative. Back inside the editor, I'll go ahead and select our loop item, which is the card itself. And we'll go over here into our styles and make sure we're on that main selector here. We don't want the pseudo element selected. Now we find those settings here in position and the position right now is set to default. If we go ahead and change this to relative, it's not gonna change anything in the editor, but it is gonna change how it behaves on the front end. So let's go ahead and save those changes and test it out. With the car now set to position relative, now when we hover over it, we can see that pseudo element is constrained to the card itself. This works on each one of the cards here because we've done it inside of a loop. Let's say you wanted to make this swipe in from the left or the top, we can change all those things here in the editor as well. We'll go back in here to our before pseudo element. We'll scroll down here to where we set the position of absolute. Let's take out this right value of zero and put it on the left. That will just make sure this pseudo element is positioned on the left. And now when we hover over it, we should see it swipe in from the left-hand side. Same thing here, if we wanted to make it swipe in from the top, we could go ahead and change this inset value to just have zero on the top and left. We would go back in here to our sizing. We can do 100% width and 0% height. And if we go into that selector where we created for the hover state, we can just change this height to 100% here. And now when we hover over it, you can see it swipes in from the top. And if you wanted it to swipe in from the bottom, we would just go back in here into that before pseudo element and we'll change this top value to blank and change the bottom to zero. And now you can see it's kind of swiping in from the bottom. Pseudo elements are such an undervalued part of CSS. I know I spent years without really understanding what they were or even knowing they existed, but once I wrap my mind around them, I haven't built a website since where I didn't find some kind of excuse to use them. Hopefully if you're new to pseudo elements, this helped out a little bit. This is just one small use case, but a really cool way of spicing up your blog cards by just giving them a little bit of motion on hover. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.